guys, welcome to another episode of Burnt Fish Angling Adventures. Today, I am here in West Virginia. Came all the way from Florida. It was about a 16 hour drive for us. And today, I'm with Josh, and we're at Smoke Hole Outfitters, trying to catch some massive trout today. So, what can you give us about like these trout we're expecting today? All right, so the average trout in the Spring Creek, we have an area called the Trophy Area, and most of those are gonna average anywhere from three to eight pounds. So, but we try to keep all the big fish in the big fish area because big fish like to eat other fish. Right. So, <laughs> so that that's why we do that. But uh, yeah, so we got a realm of species. We have the brook trout, we have the rainbow trout, tiger. You have the golden rainbow. You have the uh, what was we talking about? The uh, the tiger is an actual cross between a brook and a brown, and they're a hybrid. And then we actually have a couple albino rainbow trout, and they'll have the red eyes. Maybe you guys will get to see a couple of those. It's going to show the people what we're actually yep. going to be using today. Yeah, so, these massive trout. So uh, early in the morning, when it's really warm, we we throw our bigger, chunkier stuff. You know, like these are woolly buggers, and these are streamers. Okay. So then, uh, let's just say that you know they get start getting lazy and start dropping down in the column of the water, and then we jump into the scud patterns. Like uh, right here is a gray scud, and right here is some pheasant tail nymphs. And you'll see anything with a bead right here is anything that we would use midday. Okay. So let's just move it on into late afternoon, evening. You're going to have some hatches coming off, and you're going to move into the dry flies. Okay. And the, the dry fly would be anything with a hackle like that. You know, anything that's fuzzy looking that's gonna looks like it's gonna float. Awesome. Yep. So for all the people that's watching right now, what do they need to bring when they come here? Yeah, so right now, uh, there's a whole different realm of entomology to learn about trout fishing. So what you need to do is especially if you're targeting a certain area, is go online and just search hatch chart. It's called a hatch chart. Just just to say West Virginia hatch chart, let's just say North Fork of the South Branch of the Potomac. Could be like Cheat River, could be, you know, it could be like the Cranberry River. Every river has a different kind of a bug selection, if you will. There's an overall general scope of what's in West Virginia, but then there, like, you have areas like the Elk River that have like a good green gray catch, and we don't get that here. We get a better sulfur catch. So you got to really kind of watch whatever basin that you're in or, you know, watershed that, that has certain, you know, types of mayflies, stoneflies and all that. For the most of the time, like if you're fishing for uh, big browns or something like that, they tend to uh, key on something a little chunkier, like this would be a micro leech. Uh, the, you, you see you got some buggers here, you get a black, a white. Here's a big giant black stone fly. You know, it, it's a big chunky fly. Here's a big black stone. Uh, mop fly, stone fly, San Juan worm. Uh, this would be like a sculpin pattern, of course, once wow. that gets wet, it looks way different, but yeah, you know, that's, that. that's a chunky guy there. <laughs> you can rig up a, a two fly rig, mm -hmm. and a lot of times you'll you'll fish a dry on top, and they call it a dry dropper. Okay. Yeah, so you'll put that on top, and you'll have a, another piece of line that comes off of the shank or, or back there in the bend of your hook, and you'll come uh, down here, come and, down you'll have, here. and you'll have a nymph down here, okay? okay. So, something like that. Yeah, yeah, so you'll have this, this will be on top, this will be down here, okay? And then as you're yeah, coming to the column, it's floating yeah. just like that. So you got fish that are looking up, looking down, you know, you can kind of target each one of them. Yeah, yeah so that's called the dry dropper. And uh, you can use that as a strike indicator. Okay. Yeah, because if they hit the dropper, you know, your flies going to dunk and then you're going to set. That's awesome. Yeah, any sign of weakness, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, you let him out there in that middle and he gets the flop and the rolling and lift him in there and just pick him right up. Okay. Oh, he's actually pretty good. There you go. First trout. That's a rainbow. <laughs> 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 He says he just hit the hook. Rainbow? That's a brown. Oh, nice. Ooh, that's a big one. There we go. 
Is that a brown or a tiger? Wow. That's a brown. Golden rainbow. Golden rainbow. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Like his little safe haven, yeah. Hidey hole. You're getting tired. And these rubber nets are real fish friendly. Oh, really? I don't know if you guys ever use rubber nets or not. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Go! Again, like previously said with me and Josh, what to expect and what to bring, just to reiterate it. You also don't have to bring anything, unless you want to keep the trout they have over here in a stock pond, which is a catch and keep only, but in the rivers to my left and my right, this is all catch and release. And here is where they stock the massive 10 to 8 pounder trout. And like you can see right here, we got these massive rainbows right there, and all these nice little smaller trout in the background. But, like I said before, you don't gotta bring anything. And if you do want to stay here, it's here in West Virginia. The link's down in the description below. Go ahead and check that out. Smoky Hole Outfitters. Beautiful log cabins all out here for rent. 